have another sensational female fighter about to give her take on the fights this weekend, man. We got we got the queen, I would say, of Gideon Boxing Academy. We got Bonnie Hunter joining us. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you guys tonight? We're doing good, man. So before we get into all the previews and predictions, let us know what's going on with you and your career right now. Um, I just signed a contract. I'll be fighting out in British Columbia November 12th. I believe it's uh, they're looking also to put on an all-female card, actually. New promotion company. And they're looking to work with some Canadian female fighters and, you know, get them in the, the beginning of their career and, and help them out and really promote them. So we're excited to be working with them. That sounds amazing. That yeah. sounds amazing. So that's the it's next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, so listen, with this card this weekend, man, how, how are you feeling about, you know, this all women's card? Um, what do you think it's going to do for women's boxing? I'm, I'm so excited for this card. The, this card, this whole weekend, I should say, because Friday yeah. night, Melinda Wapool, five-time national champ, is making her debut. So we're starting off the weekend right, and then Saturday is just going to be amazing to see – England and a packed stadium there to watch all female fighters is just and 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 top notch high quality belt holding female fighters is just is, is it's something I couldn't even imagined a few years ago. Thanks, man. Speaking of Melinda Watpool, you were the chief sparring partner, <laughs> Miss Melinda Watpool. Let us know without giving away the game plan, obviously. How camp was and how what type of performance we can expect from Linda Walpole. You can expect fireworks. I, I know because I had to deal with them for several weeks. So um she is looking, she's looking great. This is the best shape I've ever seen Melinda in. And you know, she's she's ready. She's ready for the pro, the pro rank. She's ready to step in there. She's ready for the 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 change of game. And, um, you know, I know she's physically ready, mentally ready. So it, it's going to be a great fight on Friday. That is sensational. That is sensational. Now, speaking of yourself, uh, give the people, since your first time on the, on the show, a little background of how you got into boxing, why boxing. But one of the favorite questions I like to ask is what was that fight or fighter? That got you into loving boxing. <laughs> well, mine, mine is a little bit, uh, as my my coach Horace Hunter likes to say, mine is a little bit uh, different than the way most people got into boxing. I started out just for fitness. I I needed to lose some weight. Regular gym routine wasn't really my thing. And then I see this, uh, you know, big scary guy kind of yelling at a class and getting them to punch these bags. And I was like, okay, okay. That looks like a good workout, but I told him when I said what went there, I said, listen, you're not going to get me to box. I'm here to just work out, enjoy my time. Nobody's hitting me in the face. I'm not getting in that ring. That's it. And then uh, I went to watch one of his fighters fight, uh, and they were the main event, an amateur fighter. And this guy actually got cut in the fight. So they stopped the fight. He loses the fight. It was terrible. <laughs> But I said, he, I train as hard as him. I train alongside him every day. I do all the same stuff he does. He's getting in that ring. People are cheering for him. They're shouting for his name. And he's terrible. If I chose to do this, I would be good, number one. <laughs> I would be good for me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. It was, not a, it was not like a world title fight that got me into it at all. But uh, I, I got my own path there. I absolutely love his tent. <laughs> he said, man, if he can do that and get that chair, oh, I definitely can do it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> After I said I wouldn't do it, oh, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> Where do I sign? And I'll do it better. I'll do it better. I'll do it better. I love it. I love it. Uh, what would you say right now? Um, well, talk. let the people know your record. What is your record? I'm three and one. So I've had... Uh, Two fights in, in Halifax, a fight in Mexico, and one fight here in Brampton. So uh, we're hoping to to get to another two or three fights by the end of this year. 
seven pro fights in my first year of boxing as a big, as a starter, as a female, that's a, you know, so it's a high goal, but it looks like we're going to be able to hit that. So we're, we're ready. I love it. I love it. So listen, the reason we're all here, this is our prediction show. Um, how do you see the fights going down, man? We could start with Shields and Marshall. We could start with Mayor Baumgartner. You, you let us know. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I've ever been so torn over, like my, my heart says one thing, my head says another. I, I, I like Shields. I, I think she's going to bring, bring something that, that Savannah Marshall has not dealt with even as a pro, even back as an amateur. So I'm, I know she's, I know Savannah Marshall is, is tricky and she's slippery and she, she's different. She's different, but I just think that Clarissa Shields is is coming in with everything in this fight. And if she comes with everything, I think she's I think she is the quote. I think she is nobody can beat her when she's at her top. And the uh the Michaela Mayer Baumgartner fight. Mm. I like Baumgartner's trash talk. <laughs> I like her height. But I, I think Michaela Mayer comes with facts, and she's she's just got too much skill. That's what I think. I got to I got to take her for the win. Still, if she can't be caught in the first three, two to three rounds, I think the fight's hers. I love it. I love the breakdown. That's exactly what we 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 need to show that you know we got high IQ fighters. You know what I'm saying in this country that know what they're talking about when they look at boxing. So uh, we definitely appreciate the breakdown. Um, on top of it, if you if you look at it, both these fighters are, yeah, both all these fighters are doing something which is significant, which is pushing the message forward for women boxing. How do you feel this fight in itself affects women boxing here in Canada? I think it shows that it's 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 time. It's we need more promoters getting behind female boxing because number one, there's money behind it. There's an audience that want to see this. Their skill is there. So I think that this shows that you can be building shows around female fighters and they will sell and they will be amazing fights and people will talk about that and it will build excitement for the sport and build the promotion companies up themselves. So I think that this really shows that the product is there. They just need somebody helping them out and backing there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. You're here for yourself. Um, hey, Greg, that's the second scary horse hunter story we've heard. I'm just <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, man. He got some stories. We got some stories. We got to sit down. And talk I got a hundred. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second big scary dude <laughs> that uh, we heard. You know what I mean? Driving a car, he just pull up. And, yeah, we gotta figure out what's going on. <laughs> I love it. But um, what would you say? What what sports did you play growing up? None. None at all. Again, I'm a bit of an anomaly. I played no sports. I started boxing at age 27. Um, I come from a very unathletic background, but I come from a very hardworking background, and that's what's saved me and pushed me forward in this sport, and that's what's going to continue pushing me forward. I got the brains, and I got the work ethic. What do you love most about boxing, Barney? I love that it's all me in there. <laughs> I love my team. 100% I couldn't do it without them, especially because my coach is my husband. I need his support in every aspect. But when that bell rings, it's me and it's what I can do. And people are seeing what I'm putting out there. And I've never really had a chance to be some part of something that's just for myself before. And it, it just spoke to me. And, and that's what I love about boxing. What you put in is what you get out of it. And it's you that's showing that off. I love it, man. I love the whole ah, man. That grind is is something different. When you lock in on something that you 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 like and you know, and you put mm -hmm. your all like, yeah, you only gonna win. Like, and I, mm -hmm. I love it. Um, what would you say is the plans for the future? And I want to add a little caveat: is the Canadian title one of those plans for the future? Definitely. Definitely. We have um, this next fight coming up is is a big one. It's a girl. She's making her pro debut, but she's a 
Muay Thai world champion several times. So I know I already have a, a tough fight coming up. Um, and we want the next year to just be about keep building, keep getting the experience. You know, I was, I'm 38 years old. I'm not, I don't have that many years left in the sport. So every minute that I'm left in the sport, I put my all into it and I want it all out of it. So we definitely, we want to keep building up the record, building up my experience. And we want, we want titles. We want a shot. I love it. Greg, do you got one? Um, I want to know your thoughts on three minute rounds. How, how do you feel about that? Give us the money and we will do three minute rounds. <laughs> All right. <laughs> more work, more pay. That's exactly, that's what I want. I We can do it. We train for it, but mm. pay for it too. I agree. You know what? Alicia said the same thing when we talked yeah. to her in New York. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's truth. I mean, it, no matter what, I'm not, I'm not doing the same job as somebody else for less money. We've yeah. come too far in, in equal yeah. rights here. So let's, let's, let's move that up. Yeah. Facts, facts. So me? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I wanted to know, you know, cause I got, I got to know how was that conversation with your now coach and husband about getting in the ring, the same ring that you told him that you wouldn't get in. <laughs> it was it was a phone call and he was actually at the hospital for that fighter with the cut <laughs> so he's like i swear like it must be the bustle of the hospital or something because i'm hearing wrong this is not the same person who said no 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 and he's like okay come see me monday and we'll make sure that uh this is this is where we're going with it so but he's as i said he is number one my number one support so i could not do it without him so and he knows me obviously as my husband and my friend he knows if i say i'm doing something i'm putting my all into it so he said okay you come with that same fire that same passion that you come with the rest of life we're going places i got you i love it do you prefer to box or brawl I I love to fight, but I don't like getting yelled at from my coach for fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna hear after. And honestly, I don't I don't like getting it. Like I I when somebody hits me, the very first thing is like, okay, they're not doing that again. That's it. That was the only one they get. So I do. I love the I love the art of boxing. The, when you can counter punch somebody. And they've come with their attack, and you make them pay for it. There's, there's nothing sweeter in the world. I love it. Listen, we just learning a whole lot about <laughs> the queen. Uh, I like to ask some fun questions. Um, okay. I'm gonna get into them right now. I want you to, you know, uh, give us your best answers you got. So, the first questions I like to ask is: When you're doing your conditioning or road work. Um, what type of music do you like to listen to if you're listening to music at all? Uh, I listen to true crime podcasts. So I listen to stories about mm, murder and unpleasantness. <laughs> <laughs> it, it distracts me from how many miles I have left to do. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Distract the mind. What would you say is your favorite boxing drill or workout? And your least favorite boxing driller workout? Oh, that's easy. If all I ever had to do for boxing was hit pads and spar, that's all I would do. I wouldn't do any, I, none of the rest. I wouldn't do. I just love hitting pads. I love, I love the mental aspect. My coach is, he's, he's very much about the, the fine art of boxing. So it's, you know, as much hitting pads as it is talking and breaking it down and making sure everything's firing right. So I love hitting pads and then going in and sparring and putting it into practice. And like, you know, you pull off that that one little thing you were working on all week with your coach and you, you it takes everything you have not to look at him and be like, look, I, I did it. I did it because you're getting hit. But um, yeah, road work is not my <laughs> not my jam. I don't love running. I do it because I have to. Okay. Um, I got Greg. Just remind me, I got two questions. 
No, no, go ahead. No, no, outside of these questions, okay? Okay, let's do thing. Keep me, I'm rolling right now. Um, what would you say is your pre-fight meal in your young career? What do you have before you compete? It's it's nice, you know, as a as a pro, I've I've learned that you need the right team around you if you want to if you want to be an athlete you need to live like an athlete so i i work with a nutritionist my nutritionist at araya health is he's top notch he doesn't leave anything to to chance so he's like this is exactly what you eat so usually i'm eating after weigh-ins of course um i'm i'm eating a nice chicken sandwich you know white bread which i haven't had in weeks some fries um and uh, I, I drink beet juice to fuel up, get ready for that fight. So I literally eat whatever I'm told to eat by my nutritionist. I'm, I'm very obedient that way. And what would you say is your post-fight guilty pleasure? Like, I got I, I gots to have it as soon as I get out the ring. A blizzard. Give me a blizzard okay. from DQ. Hey, give me a DQ blizzard. <laughs> You got to flip it upside down. That's yep, you, yep, that's, that's the it. truth. <laughs> Just in case you guys don't know. Learn life. Um, my final question is, if you were a superhero, what would be your superhero power? Well, probably mind control. Yeah. That that telekinesis. Mm. I told you, I'm, I'm very much about the brain. And uh, – as an athlete, my controlling side works really well, but as a superhero, it probably uh, might take over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that wraps up my favorite questions I like to ask, you know, athletes, uh, just so the fans can get a deeper understanding of, you know, just a little bit more about them. The other two questions I wanted to ask, I remembered, Greg, is mm -hmm. um, how does your family, who is not, known for combat feel about you inside the ring and the second part of that question is you have a little one you have a little girl how do you feel about her watching you compete and maybe want to do the same thing uh my own family that's a whole that is a whole nother podcast <laughs> uh i didn't <laughs> I didn't tell my family I started boxing for years. They found out because I think they Googled me or something and they found a, a amateur fight on, on YouTube. Um, I come from a, I grew up in a, a religious cult. So they, I broke away from that obviously. So they are very against uh, competitive sports, um, violent sports as they were at combat sports. So we're kind of at the they pretend it doesn't exist stage and I just I just do my thing and I go on with my life. None of that's going to hold me back. Um, but I I built my own, you know, I have my my husband's family is incredibly supportive. My in-laws are incredible and my mother-in-law actually travels with us for every fight now so she can watch Marley my daughter and she gets to be there at every fight and it was really cool. I like to share the story of um, I fought on a Red Owl show back in May, and it was the eve of Mother's Mother's Day Eve. And so f it's a very nice small venue. So while I'm in there, I could hear my daughter and my mother-in-law, both of them, cheering for me. And it was just this really incredible feeling of like this is family support, and this is this is what it's really about. So if my daughter, if she chooses to compete, if she doesn't. That's that's on her. I don't I don't put any pressure on her, but she knows how to box. Trust me. She's already at age five. She can pack a punch. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, those are the questions I have. I definitely thoroughly. I've been wanting you to come on the show for a long time. I'm glad we got you on. You yeah. know, what I mean? definitely have you as a regular on the show just to continue to press, you know, the 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 career forward. And we continue to talk about the things that need to happen. Call out a few fighters. I know you got a little bit of that. I like that. <laughs> I want to fight her. Like, she don't want to fight me, but I want to fight her. You know, we'll get it to the people and they'll do what they got to do. So thank you very much. Uh, shout thank out to you. you. Say hello to, you know, Horace for me. And uh, yeah. Greg, shout, you know what to do. Yeah, but why not? It's a school night. So 
We're that gonna time. Get, <laughs> yeah, but it was a pleasure having you on the show. Definitely Thank come you. back any any time, man. And we definitely gonna be well, we're already following your career. So awesome. Um, Thank you for having me. It was wonderful. Absolutely. So take care. Have a good night, gentlemen. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only Bonnie Hunter. Man, listen.